Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Um, I stumbled across this chess game played between Hikaru Nakamura and Ali Reza Faruja, uh, which was played in April. I was actually looking at some Scandinavian ideas and I actually stumbled the cloth across Nakamura's uh, 4b4 idea, which is a gambit in the Scandinavian. Uh, so in this game, this was actually played in the Carlson Invitational on Chess 24. I think it was April this year. And um, yeah, Faruja is a very strong player and I think this was a rapid game. But uh, we'll see what Nakamura did to um, defeat Faruja in 19 moves, unbelievably. So it makes uh, Faruja to look like an absolute amateur. Uh, but this guy is a prodigy, so it's a quite an interesting game. So Nakamura began with e4. Black played d5. There was takes and takes and knight to c3, hitting the queen. And the queen went to a5. Now this is all standard stuff from the Scandinavian opening. But now Nakamura hit with a uh, a very unusual move. It's not, he didn't make this up, but um, it's very unusual to play at top level. He played now b4. Uh, just hitting the queen and sacrificing a pawn. Um, black could ignore this. He could play queen to b6 if he really wanted to. But then white just develops uh, normally. For instance, if knight to f6, white can play rook to b1. And in some variations, this pawn can become very annoying because white could push it up, uh, stops um, black developing the knight to c6, for instance. Also, if black uh, actually takes on the second move, it's wasted a move here, and again, white can just play rook b1, sacking the pawn, and has a massive lead in development. In the game, though, so black uh, took it, queen takes b4, Nakamura played rook to b1, hitting the queen, and it jumps in to d6, and d4 is played. Uh, so what is the point of sacking your b4 pawn? Well, this um, becomes rather annoying for black because their bishop's tied down to this b7 square. And basically all white now needs to do is just develop quickly, maybe knight to a3, bishop c4, castles, and this queen is also quite exposed as well. So at some point black will have to retreat it backwards. So basically it's a good uh, idea just to get the initiative really quickly, especially in a rapid game. And we all know Nakamura is a ridiculously strong player. Uh, so there'd be a lot of tactics uh, in this sort of setup. Now typically here, black usually played knight to f6. And play usually continues knight to f3 and a6. Bishop d3, g6. Castles, bishop g7. And mostly in most games, uh, knight to e4 is now played with takes, takes, knight c6 and c3. And this is... What most games have uh, developed into when I checked on the chess base. But Faruja came up with a novelty here. It's actually the third best move according to Stockfish. He just retreated his queen backwards, so queen to d8. Um, so basically has the starting position with just a pawn down, so it's very unusual actually to see this. Uh, Nakamura continued then, bishop c4, developing a piece. Faruja develops his knights, there's knights to f3. And e6. So black's being very solid, um, trying to blunt this c4 bishop against um, this f7 pawn. Uh, but Nakamura now does castles. And I've highlighted everything in green here. The bishop's nicely developed on c4. The knight is on c3, knight on f3, and white's also castled and has an open file for their rook. And in the same amount of time, okay, let's give black another move, bishop e7. They've actually developed two pieces. And to be honest, White's now ready for the attack straight away. So Nakamura centralizes his knights, knight to e5, and black castles. And Nakamura just uh, gets his rook onto a half open file, rook to e1, all standard stuff. And here actually he allows black to make a mistake straight away. Um, I believe maybe black is forced into this because it's very tricky for black to really have an idea here. Um, he played c5, Faruja, which hits out at the d4 pawn, which makes a lot of sense because if white now just takes, then queen takes, rook takes, and bishop takes is just nice for black, and we've got an even game. Um, but unfortunately for black, um, they can just push the pawn up to d5, and this causes a lot of problems now for black, as we'll see. So Faruja takes, and knight takes, and suddenly we see all the problems that black has. There's a lot of discovered attacks against this bishop on e7, 
and a lot of ideas of knight takes f7 coming in uh, because this bishop on c4 is x-raying the king. So let's just have a look what happens if uh, knight takes d5 here. Well, if this happens, white can take with the queen. After queen takes, bishop takes, suddenly we realise black's in a lot of trouble. Uh, the bishop and the rook converge on b7, as we can see, and the knight and the bishop also converge on f7. The best move I could find for black was maybe bishop to f6 here, hitting the knight. Uh, but even after this move, white can play knight takes f7. If rook takes this knight, then it's checkmate. Um, and if, let's say, knight to d7, there's a discovered check with knight to d6. Uh, the bishop hits the king. And the king hides in the corner. Knight takes c8, rook takes, and rook takes b7. Uh, with a very nice position for white, they've won the pawn back. And you have to say, much uh, with a much better position. Um, so in the game, after knight takes um, d5, Frugia, instead of taking on d5 as well, played bishop to e6. So tries to plunt this bishop on c4 once again. But actually there's a nice tactic here which Nakamura spots. I wonder if you can see it actually. Maybe pause the video um, for a few seconds and see what you would play here. But it's a, a very nice move. But uh, So he actually played knight takes f7. So hits the queen, the rook hits the bishop, and uh, black's in a bit of trouble here. So let's have a look at what black can play. First off I looked at bishop takes f7. That seems most logical because we take back with a piece that's under attack. But white can play this. Knight takes e7 with check. King h8. Trade queens and play bishop takes f7. White just simply wins a piece. There's also rook takes f7 here. But again, knight takes e7. Queen takes and white just wins a piece with rook takes e6. Uh, because next move, the rook's attacking the queen and there'll, there'll be a discovered attack against the rook and the king. So in the game, Frugia had to play king takes f7. Uh, but now Nakamura comes crashing in with a very nice move, rook takes e6. Uh, the rook and the knight attacking the bishop on e7. Um, and in the game, king takes rook was played. Knight takes d5 could have been played for black as well, but actually it leads to a mating position. So bishop takes d5 would have been played, again x-raying the king, forcing black to retreat to e8, but now comes queen h5 with check. If g6, there's queen takes h7. The queen and the rook are attacking the bishop. If black tries to defend, there's another check, rook f8, pick up another pawn, and once the king moves to d7, um, this triggers rook takes b7 with check. And if king c8, uh, rook takes, queen takes the bishop, and this should be winning for white now, with rook check, king to d8, and bishop g5, forcing black to trade off the queen, and checkmate. So that's actually, I think it was a mate in eight that Stockfish found here, if... Um, after this knight takes d5 idea. Um, so in the game though, Ferugia took on e6. Nakamura played knight takes f6 with check. The king takes. And now there's queen f3 with check. And it seems as though Nakamura has everything figured out here. Uh, the king is wide open, so it's just a matter of finding the right um, sort of mating pattern. For instance, if king g6, the best move would have been queen to e4 with check. Um, and if king h5, then queen takes h7, king g4 and h3 is actually checkmate um, because the bishop on c1 does a great job. If we just go back as well after queen e4, there's also rook f5 to block, but then queen e6 with check. If uh, the king hides on h5, there's a nice mating here, pattern here with bishop e2, king h4, g3, king h3 and queen takes f5. So yeah, black's in a lot of trouble, and even after rook f5, queen e6, if rook to f6 here, uh, queen g4 is in fact checkmate. So this bishop does a great job of cutting the king off from, um, let's say, an, an escape. So in the game, queen f3 was played with check, king e5 was played by Ferugia, and Nakamura now plays a very nice move, just queen g3. 
So this is a good check because it stops the king escaping onto this sort of square here where it can hide away. So again, the king is forced open. The king went to d4 in this position. Uh, and after Nakamura played bishop to b2, uh, Frugia resigned the game. So the king just gone for a walk and found itself mated. The point is, if um, the king takes the bishop, then queen b3 is checkmate. And the king to e4, then queen e5 is checkmate. Um, so this was a really nice game by Nakamura. I like the fact that he played this b4 idea. Um, it's very unusual to play. Maybe you could also play it against your opponents. If Nakamura was playing it, then surely it has some uh, merit to it. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed my analysis of their game. If you did, please do drop a like, comment or subscribe, and I'll see you next time.